Oh, so you want to learn how to catch Pokemon? Well, it's all about patience. You gotta let the Pokemon come to you. You have to weaken down the Pokemon just a tad. You can't immediately throw your Pokeball, although- Oh my god, it's a shiny! <laughs> Sorry, kid. What is going on, guys? This is Dobbs here, bringing you another Pokemon video. And in this video, I want to show you all the top 10 rare shiny Pokemon of all time. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoy the video, and without further ado, let's get started. Number 10. Now this might sound a little strange, but I don't play Pokemon Go at all. Yes, a Pokemon YouTuber who makes a bunch of Pokemon videos doesn't play Pokemon Go. I'm sorry, I just, I just don't like it. But something that I do like and found interesting when researching for this video is that Pokemon Go has one of the rarest shiny Pokemon of all time. That's right, if you're a Pokemon Goer, is that what they call them? Pokemon Goers? If you play Pokemon Go, you may have the rank number 10 shiny Pokemon in my opinion. Enter the Party Hat Pichu. Not only was this Pichu only available for two days, which is one of the shortest amount of times for any event Pokemon, but there was only a 1 in 450 chance of hatching a shiny in a 2 kilometer egg. And you weren't even guaranteed an egg at every Pokestop. You would literally have to find a Pokestop, obtain a 2 kilometer egg, walk 2 kilometers, and hope you get that 1 in 450 chance of a shiny Party Hat Pichu. Oh, and did I mention that you weren't guaranteeing a Party Hat Pichu from every egg? So yeah, consider yourself lucky if you have one of these bad boys. But I want to get too excited because this is nothing compared to what's to come on this list. So let's continue. Number 9 Now for this next Pokemon, you could technically consider it to be the rarest shiny Pokemon of all time, but in my opinion, I think that's kind of cheating. So with that said, for number 9, I chose a Generation 2 Shiny Unknown. Now back in the glory days of Generation 2, shiny Pokemon were determined by the IVs of the specific Mon. Meaning, if a Pokemon's speed, defense, and special IVs were all 10, along with its attack IV being 2, 3, 6, 7, 10, 11, 14, or 15, it will inevitably be a shiny. But due to this oddly specific mechanic, it caused a dilemma with unknown. You see, the lettering of unknown was also determined by the IVs of the Pokemon. So because of this interesting dynamic, only the letter I and V of unknown could be shiny. Which is kind of weird if you think about it, because the letter I and V unknowns can only be shiny, and the shininess is determined by the IVs of the Pokemon. Maybe Game Freak was trying to hint at what shiny Pokemon were determined by. But anyways, this meant that every other unknown letter couldn't be shiny. It was programmically? Is that a word? It was programmically impossible. The code couldn't handle it. It was too much. But yeah, that is why I chose a shiny non-IV unknown for number 9. Number 8. Now this is something you probably haven't seen in any shiny Pokemon video. And you know me, I like to mix up the top 10s by a notch. So for number 8, I chose a life-size shiny Magikarp plush. That's right, a Pokemon merchandise toy is in the top 10. And it's for a really good reason. To simply put it, this is probably one of the most rarest Pokemon plushes in the world. Because the circumstances you had to be in to obtain this plush were very specific. Not only was this plush only available for a limited time, such a limited time that I couldn't even find the dates that it was available, it was only sold in Nagoya, Japan for 5800 yen, which is about 50 US dollars. And you're probably asking yourself, Dobbs, why is this so important to be number 8 on this list? Well, for one, like, like, come on, it's, it's a life-size shiny Magikarp, I mean, that, that's cool, right? And for two, if you Google life-size shiny Magikarp plush, there is like almost no information on this toy, and it goes for hundreds and hundreds of dollars on eBay. And if you're asking me, I don't think I've ever seen a plush go for that much, ever. But anyways, that is why I chose this life-size shiny Magikarp for number eight on this list. Number seven. 
Now, this is part of the video when these shiny Pokemon start to become crazy. So hold on tight because you are not going to believe how rare these shiny Pokemon are. So for number 7, we have a female shiny Combi. And that doesn't sound that bad, right? Wrong. This little shit is ridiculously hard to get, and here I will tell you why. In Pokemon Diamond and Pearl, there are honey trees. And you know, you slather the honey on the trees, and every 6 hours you have a chance of encountering a combi. A 20% chance, keep that in mind. So when you finally get lucky enough to encounter a combi, you then have a 1 in 8 chance of it being a female. So already our chances are looking pretty grim after every 6 hours. But don't worry, it gets even better. After your 1 in 32 chance of encountering a female combi, you then have a 1 in 8192 chance of it being a shiny, making a shiny female combi a 1 in 327,000 chance of happening. Yeah, it's uh, it's pretty rare. So if you're trying to get a shiny Vespaquin, good luck because they are extremely rare. Which is why it's number 7 for this list. Number 6 <laughs> Now a lot of you may be too young to know, but Pokemon Stadium was one of the coolest games ever. And you're probably wondering why I'm bringing it up in this top 10 because there's no shiny Pokemon in this game, is there? Well, believe it or not, there is a chance of coming across a shiny Pokemon, but the odds of it happening are incredibly slim. And guess what, I'm not gonna tell you how because I'm awesome. Number five. <laughs> I'm just kidding guys, but anyways, enter the challenge cup in Pokemon Stadium. Now in this cup, every Pokemon you battle with and battle against are randomized. And since the programmers coded it to be nothing but randomness, there is a chance of the Pokemon being shiny. But the odds of this happening are so slim that you will almost never see it happen, especially with no one playing Pokemon Stadium these days. But lucky for us, it did happen once to a Pokemon speedrunner known as Worcester. Here, check it out. God has a shiny. That was a legit shiny. Pretty awesome, right? So yeah, for the fact that Pokemon Stadium is hardly played by anybody anymore, I chose a Challenge Cup shiny Pokemon for number six for this list. Number five. <laughs> Now so far in this top 10, we've gone over some of the rare shiny Pokemon from the video games and one of the rare shiny Pokemon plushes, but have you ever wondered what the rare shiny Pokemon card is? Well guess what, for number 5, I chose a Japanese Umbreon Gold Star card. That's right, this is one of the most rare shiny Pokemon cards that you will ever see, but the thing is you'll you'll never see it, so so I, I, I have no idea where to go with this. But anyways, back in 2005, this card was made available through the Desuki Pokemon fan club. And for one year, you were able to get this card if you gained 70,000 XP points. And you're probably telling yourself, that's that's not that bad. I mean, 70,000 points? I mean, I, I can count to 7 10,000 times. But look at this XP award structure. How in the heck are you going to gain 70,000 points in one year with these options? That is like almost impossible. You would have to like dedicate your whole life to this fan club. And I mean, the English version of this card was much easier to obtain. All you had to do was pull out of a booster pack. And these cards go for thousands of dollars on eBay, so you can only imagine how much the Japanese version would go for. So yeah, this card is extremely rare, and that is why it is number 5 on this list. Number four. Now like we all know, back in Pokemon Red and Blue, shiny Pokemon didn't exist. But what if I told you they did exist? Well I'll be lying because they don't. They don't exist in Generation 1, period. But they do. L let me just let me just explain. Now, like what I was saying earlier about how shiny Pokemon are programmed in Generation 2, the shininess always depends on the Pokemon stats. You see where I'm going with this? So, if you're lucky enough, if your Generation 1 Pokemon meets the requirements for the shininess in Generation 2, it could transform into a shiny Pokemon. And that's it. That's number four. Generation 1 shiny Pokemon. In quotes. And in a parentheses. Yeah. 
But in all seriousness, the reason why I ranked this so high on this list is because the odds of this happening were so slim that it was not even heard of. I mean, first of all, you would need to find someone else with a Game Boy and a Link cable or just have it yourself. And then second of all, the trading process takes like two minutes to complete. So really, what are the odds of someone trading more than like two Pokemon and getting a shiny full odds? Not to mention that most of us probably lost our Pokemon Red and Blue game after getting gold and silver. So the odds of this happening were just incredibly slim and still are. But yeah, for those reasons, I chose Generation 1 Shiny Pokemon for number 4 in this list. Number 3 Now this next Pokemon is so rare that I guarantee you that no one has ever seen a shiny encounter. Well, I can't, I can't guarantee you it, but the odds are super slim, like super duper slim. Enter a 2001 event shiny Celebi. That's right, this Pokemon, even before you could shiny hunt for it, was incredibly complex to get. And in my opinion, I believe this is the rarest event Pokemon out there. And I know what you're thinking. Dobbs, you can easily shiny hunt for an event Celebi in the virtual release of Pokemon Crystal. And I know you're right, that is true and all. But you gotta keep in mind, there is a huge difference between the virtual event Celebi and the mobile event Celebi from back in 2001. On one hand, with the virtual event Celebi, all you had to do was, you know, go get the Pokemon. That's it. But back in 2001, it was a completely different story. First of all, you had to be in Japan. And then second of all, you would have to buy a special cable to connect to your Japanese exclusive phone that would then allow you to trigger the GS Ball event. And then finally, you would need to have 16 badges, complete a mini game and a quiz, and then meet an attendant at the Pokemon Communication Centers in Goldrod City. And then you have to take the GS Ball that you got from the attendant to Kurt, wait 24 hours, and then go to the Elix Forest Shrine and unlock Celebi. But after doing all of this, the player would either have to get lucky to get the shiny Celebi or know it's a soft reset for the shiny chance of getting a Celebi. Back in 2000, with no internet, no guides, only knowledge or chance that shiny Pokemon can be soft resetted in Gen 2. Now tell me, tell, tell me, what are the freaking chances of this happening? Not likely at all. But this is only number three, and the next two are just freaking ridiculous. So stay tuned. Number two. Okay, so if you thought the 2001 shiny event Selby was insane, wait until you, until you uh, uh, see this one. Are are you okay, Psyduck? You kind of look like you just saw something uh, crazy. Okay, so anyways, for number two, I chose a Pokemon Ranger Manaphy. A shiny Manaphy. Now, this one may not be as convoluted as the shiny event Celebi was, but it is definitely more time consuming to say the least. Starting with the easy stuff, all you have to do to get the Manaphy Egg is beat the Pokemon Ranger game. Sounds pretty easy, right? Well, no, it's a complete nightmare after you get the egg. You see, when you transfer your Manaphy egg to a Generation 4 game, the shininess depends on your Trainer ID and Secret ID. And if you're lucky enough to get the shiny Manaphy on your first attempt, then, well, you're golden. But if you're like all of us and don't get as lucky, then that Manaphy egg becomes shiny locked. Now, after this dilemma, you have two options. And this is where the time consumption begins. You can either beat Pokemon Ranger again and get another Manaphy egg, or you can outsmart the system and create a new game on a separate cartridge to generate a new trainer ID and secret ID. And obviously, most of us is going to go with option two. So at this point, you would have to create a new game, go to the Pokemon Center, trade the egg from the old game to the new game, hash the egg, hope that it's a shiny, if it's not a shiny, reset your game, trade it back to the old game, make a new game on the second game, and do it all over again, and again, and again, for hours, and hours, and days, and years, lifetime. Yeah, this shiny mythical is extremely rare. But, this, in my opinion, doesn't even compare to number one. So let's continue. Number one. Now you're probably asking yourself, what on earth is more rare than a 2001 Shiny Event Celebi and a Pokemon Ranger Shiny Manaphy? 
And well, there really isn't much to say because these shiny Pokemon are pretty simple. So for number one, I chose a shiny shadow Pokemon that retains its shininess. That's right, in the first Pokemon Coliseum game when you battle a trainer with a shadow Pokemon, it has a 1 in 8192 chance of being shiny. But due to a coding error when you catch that shiny shadow Pokemon, it goes through another shiny check of 1 in 8192, meaning there is a 1 in 67 million chance of getting a shiny shadow Pokemon that retains its shininess. Think about it, Pokemon Coliseum has probably sold around 2 million copies, and the chances of getting a shiny shadow Pokemon that retains its shininess is 33 million times more than copies owned. It is insanely rare, and that is why it is number one for the rarest shiny Pokemon of all time. And there you go, the top 10 rarest shiny Pokemon of all time. I hope you enjoyed the video, this one took a while to make because I've just been so busy with my senior year of college. So if you enjoyed it, be sure to hit that like button and subscribe for more videos like this. And if you want to get notifications for the channel and all, be sure to hit that bell, because that bell does something. Also, be sure to follow me on Twitter at Ethan Dawes because Twitter is, is cool and I tweet and you should follow my tweets. And subscribe to my gaming channel where I upload about four times a week. And finally, for the question of the day, what is the rare shiny Pokemon that you've caught? Be sure to let me down below in the comments because I suck at shiny hunting. I don't have the patience. So I want to see what you've guys gone through. And yeah, that's all for this video and I'll see you guys next time. See ya.